Good morning from Brussels. It is really a great honor for me to kick off this series of talks. Today, there in your auditorium, we have presentations on open source GIS solutions created and used across the European Commission. We have talks from researchers working on European public service. And you will hear on the progress on GIS projects made possible with European research funds. A special thank you to my European Commission colleagues from Eurostat and the Joint Research Center, Hannes Reuter and Marco Mingini, for your contributions, past, present and future, on open source GIS. You are leading us on our path towards establishing a working culture that is based on the principles of open source. In addition, I applaud all of you who gathered here at the end of August during what is for most of you your precious vacation time. Thank you for your dedication to open source, to openness, to sharing and working together across boundaries of organizations, countries and cultures, so well representing our European way of life. And I mean this in a non-geographic sense. You are making our world a better place and this in a very geographic sense. In addition, you have made a strategic choice to be open that is resonating with us as the European Commission. Let me show you. First of all, we recognize the practical value in terms of cost, flexibility, scalability, vendor independence and the freedom to innovate and share. That's because we use a lot of open source. You find it all over my organization, the Directorate General for Informatics. It's dominant in the data center where more than 75% of our server hosts run Linux. For commission set websites, we use Drupal everywhere. Our software developers, our internal environment is increasingly relying on open source. It is at the core of our build and code management environment. We build our own solutions on top of widely used open source building blocks and libraries. We use open source to provision many of the services which we make available inside and outside of the Commission to the European public. It is all of the software developed and shared by the big European programs like the ISA Square program and the Connecting Europe facility. You will find these software solutions under their new name now, the Digital Europe program. Over the past two decades, the use of software expanded from the data center to commission desktops, including web browser Firefox, Media Player VLC, and of course, also like LibreOffice. At the same time, we see a progression, a transition, a coming of age from an organization that consumes open source to one that produces its own solutions on top of open source and becomes closely involved in upstream projects. And we are now well on our way to the next phase in this transformation to one, share our software publicly and two, contribute to existing open source projects. Led in part by you, in the geoinformatics space at Eurostat and JRC, but in truth, across all commission services, colleagues develop and increasingly share software solutions and utilities as open source. There are at least 120 such commission built solutions available today, and we expect to see this number increase steadily as we embrace more and more the open source lifestyle, this working culture based on the principles of open source. In summary, one, open source is practical. Two, there is a second reason why the Commission reflects your choice of preferring open source. The past three years, open source has become much more visible at the Commission. That is because the Commission recognizes that open source is much more than a practical tool or even a lifestyle. Strategically, our future depends on it. Open source is linked to our policy goals. It is a central part of the Commission 
digital transformation. It is essential for a European digital infrastructure. And it is clear to us that only openness can deliver digital sovereignty. Last month, we announced the renewal of the European Commission's digital strategy. There, we emphasize that our progress builds on an increasing use of open source software. We will share our open source work across departments and we will co-create our solutions with other European public services. And this is going to become our default because the member states and the public sector in Europe too acknowledge the strategic importance of open source. On June 24, in a joint statement, European member states under the French presidency of the Council of the European Union committed themselves to open source. They too see the need to shape our digital world in accordance with our values, norms, principles and along European interests. We all now recognize the practical and geopolitical importance of open source. It is why the Commission two years ago elevated the open source strategy, taking it out of the domain of digit and the IT and making it a Commission-wide strategy. So now let's turn to the action. The open source strategy comes complete with 10 actions. The strategy created a dedicated team, the Commission Open Source Program Office or OSPO. The OSPO is here to, for one, remove legal and organizational barriers, making it easier for the Commission to share internally and, most of all, externally our code. Second, it's there to assist our governance colleagues to build open source into their projects evaluation processes and to nudge new projects to explore open source alternatives first. And last, of the utmost importance, our OSPO focuses on IT security. So the OSPO is also an easy entry point for open source initiatives inside the Commission and it helps us build long-lasting relationships with external open source communities. Two years and what have we achieved so far? I will limit myself to three main achievements and activities in chronological order. First, we've changed the defaults in our internal development system. New projects are now by default shared across the Commission services. And make no mistake, a big task remains, getting all of our many, many existing projects to change to this new way of working is a task. I actively advocate this change in approach, working with my own departments in Digit, and to infuse the open source lifestyle into all my and all Commission teams and projects. Second achievement, we've changed the household rules of the Commission. We got rid of an outdated and complicated bureaucratic legal process that stopped us from sharing software as open source. As of December last year, Commission projects that wish to share their software with others are basically free to do so. And we are just a few weeks away from making a key announcement on this related to a central code repository for sharing our open source code with the rest of the world. And here, too, let's not underestimate the process. We are a big organization and the OSPO continues to communicate and explain these new rules to all teams there are. Third achievement, the past two years the OSPO, and effectively it's just a small team, has been very busy professionalizing our relation with open source communities. For example, we are working with key open source projects organizing bug bounties and hackathons. We've done bug bounties on Mastodon, CryptPad, LibreOffice, Leos, Moodle, Zimbra, Matrix, Element. And in these bug bounties, the community fixed I don't know how many bugs, and we as the Commission paid out in total 304,000 euros in bug bounties. 
and we completed hackathons with Jitsi and Nextcloud and Moodle. The latter we organized together with the United Nations, one of the public services that, inspired by our open source strategy, is working to create their own program. In all three of these hackathons, the community has come up with very practical and cool new features. These are already included in Jitsi, and both Nextcloud and Moodle are busy doing the same. We are building a network of peers, first with the European member states, regularly meeting our colleagues in the governments and other public services of, for example, France, Italy, Germany and Sweden. Second, we are working with the UN and others. The goal here is to work on a joint approach and best practices and to actively help other public services ramp up their efforts on open source. There's a lot more to all of this networking. For example, with support from the European Parliament, we are beginning a project with the Member States to automatically federate all of our catalogues across the EU of all of our open source solutions that any public sector organ organization across Europe is involved in. Speaking of open source solutions, with all this talking, I'm actually keeping you from hearing about GISCO and INSPIRE, about Earth observation and climate forecasting. I'm very encouraged by the growth in open source geoinformatics. Its practical and strategic value is reflected in the breadth and scope of the presentations today. My apologies, as I can't be here in person to answer questions if you have any. However, one of my colleagues from the Open Source Program Office is online and will be happy to answer any questions you may have. I know that he is eager to hear from you and from the other speakers and presenters in this session. All that's left for me to do is wish you a great conference. Thank you for your patience.